Hi, it's David here from Parts and Pumps. In this short video guide, I'm going to run through probably the ultimate repair you might need to do to a Seco JDK pump. If your pump has experienced a catastrophic failure, probably due to blocked pipe work and thus overheating, you may find the drive core has failed. This may well be shown by the pump being unable to run for more than a few minutes before stopping, or in the worst case, tripping the RCD or blowing fuses when powered up. The first thing to do is to identify the cause of the failure or any repair will be short-lived. Assuming you've sorted that out, let's run through the rebuild. Essentially, you're installing a brand new pump into the external casing of your existing pump. Before starting any maintenance, isolate the pump from the mains. The heart of your pump is the core drive unit. This is the part that generates the air and passes it into the labyrinth base of the unit. Undo the nut and bolt in each corner using a good quality cross-bladed screwdriver. The nut will fall out from its socket underneath, so hold on to that as you undo the bolt, and then put them carefully to one side ready for reassembly. If the casing doesn't release easily, and it's likely the seal will hold it tight, use a flat bladed screwdriver to break that seal so you can gently lift the upper casing away from the base. Bear in mind that there is some cabling involved here, so be gentle and slow and lift the upper casing away. There's likely to be wires connecting the base to the upper lid for the service light, so tip it back gently and then lift the acoustic wrap away. This is not a filter, it's just there to reduce the noise. You now have the internal core exposed, ready for replacement. We now just need to remove the connectors for the air and electricity. Squeeze the steel clips and slide them down the pipe, and gently ease both pipes off the valve box nozzles, turning them through 90 degrees to give you some space to work in. Now the electrical connectors need some attention. On an original core installation, the cables are usually cabled tight together. Cut or clip this to gain a little bit more space. Identify the earth wire and remove the screw and washer, again keeping it safe to one side. Separate the bullet connectors and the upper lid can be moved away to give you some more room to work. With a flat bladed screwdriver, gently ease the rubber foot out of the corner of the drive unit's base and do the same to all four feet. Offer the new drive unit onto the feet and push each one home into the corner slot. Reattach the earth cable with the washer and screw. Connect the bullet connectors, making sure they're all in good and tight. Turn the pipes back inward and ease them onto the nozzles of the valve boxes, turning the clip down so it doesn't end up buzzing against the inside of the lid, and you're pretty nearly done. Pop the lid off to ensure the auto stopper switch is centralised, like shown here. Slide the acoustic wrap back around the core. Gently slide the upper case down, making sure you've not trapped any cabling. Tighten the four nuts and bolts at each corner. Take a moment to check the condition of the filter. It's not a bad idea to wash the filter every three or four months and replace it annually. Make sure the soft strips are in good condition and properly seated to stop the top lid from buzzing when the pump is operating. Pop the lid back on and you're good to go.